Senior Australian Network, Ron Markland and Janet Wilson present the ABC News. Good evening and welcome to ABC News. Good evening. Tonight we cross straight to Richard Palfreyman in our American studios for the latest on that tragedy which has killed all seven people aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger. Tonight the American space program is in disarray in the aftermath of the Challenger tragedy. It seems that this whole nation has been shaken by the enormity of that disaster that came so unexpectedly at a point when space travel has become an everyday event. NASA engineers have stopped the shuttle program in its tracks while they piece together what went wrong. And in the tradition of engineers, they're not talking until they have something definite to talk about. And so it's been left to the politicians and in particular President Reagan to reinforce America's resolve to continue in the wake of this considerable setback. We'll continue our quest in space. There will be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews and yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. Seven crew members died today, the first ever American astronauts to lose their lives while actually aloft. It's 19 years since the last disaster, the explosion on the launch pad of Apollo 1 that killed the crew of three. Six of the Challenger crew were regular astronauts. The seventh was a mother of two, a social studies teacher, who'd won her place as America's first teacher in space. The victims, Flight Commander Francis Scobie, 46, with wife and two children. Pilot Michael Smith, 40 years old, married with three children. Mission Specialist, Physicist Ronald McNair, also married and with two children. Mission Specialist Ellison Onizuka, a Japanese-American, again married, with two children. Electrical Engineer Judith Resnick, a veteran astronaut at 36, she was single. Payload specialist Gregory Jarvis, an engineer, 41, and married. And Krista McAuliffe, the New Hampshire school teacher who was going to use the shuttle as a classroom. It was McAuliffe who attracted most attention, who received an apple for the teacher as she and her six crewmates prepared to board the shuttle this morning. In the VIP stand, her family and friends waited patiently to see the start of a flight that had been delayed several times because of technical problems and bad weather. One, and liftoff, liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. At this point, everything... Immediately after liftoff, it was looking like a normal launch, a sight we've become used to, and one that major American television networks no longer carry live. On the ground, there was expectation. Engines at 65%, three engines uh, running north. The flight was only a minute and a half old when the first signs of trouble became apparent to those watching the television pictures supplied by NASA. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Their faces... Back on the ground, the families and friends in the guest stand at first weren't aware of what was happening. And then, the dreadful enormity of it all began to dawn. The families have been secluded in the astronauts' quarters at the space... We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. Flight director confirms that...